my name is mohammed abdul rahman khan i am from uh, the bpl institute of technology and science bits pilani but the hyderabad campus because i live in hyderabad and the campus is like well it's not close to home it's like 70 km it's not really in hyderabad it's like very far off but like i didn't want to go to goa or pilani pilani is like in the middle of nowhere and i know i feel like the hyderabad campus is better than goa so i decided to go to the hyderabad campus i am pursuing uh, currently a dual degree from uh, bits which is an msc in economics plus a bachelor's in uh, mechanical engineering so it's a five year course uh, it started in 2017 so this is my final year when you do a de- dual degree course your fifth year is, is essentially only internships so you do one internship each semester so i did an internship last semester and i'm continuing the same internship this semester also i am interning with deutsche bank as a risk analyst intern because most of my like education i was like because i did two degrees like uh, economics one and a uh, mechanical one and i found myself like liking the economics degree a lot more than i was liking like the engineering mechanical side of things so i decided like yeah fine i'll probably focus on like you know the finance side of things the economic side of things the management side of things so yeah that is the internship that i'm doing right now this internship ends on the 24th of june and then i'll be done with my bachelor academics essentially uh so uh yeah i have also gotten placed but i'm deciding not to go with the job offer which was a pretty tough decision so before i got into uh, inciad which is what the which is the school i got into i got into a masters in management degree and mim at inciad but this was i think my final admit so i applied i i was initially going to apply to 13 schools like that was the plan because i was really really determined to get into an mim and go to like somewhere in europe to either like france or the uk or germany or the netherlands or italy uh, so the first admit that i had gotten i remember was from azhek and the second admit i had gotten was from the stockholm school of economics and the third admit i had gotten was from bokoni and i was not expecting to get into like an into inciad and so like the decision of whether i should take my placement the job that i had gotten or go to the school that i had gotten into was a tough one till i got into inciad when i got into inciad okay i was like okay now it's not really a competition for me anymore so like that was that was something that like was an easy decision for me to take after that so i had applied to inciad in their third round i think somewhere in uh, november and the reason i really wanted to do an mim was because what an mim essentially from my understanding or what i am perceiving this degree to be for me is like a it's like a early career mba if you want to do an mba essentially you're going to have to clock in like 4 5 years of experience if you're absolutely exceptional who's done something like you know get a multi million dollar valuation at like a young age for a company then you might be able to do an mba with like 2 years of work ex because then you are telling them that you know you want this mba to be able to run your company better which is something that most mbas are partial to it's most mbas are a little partial to as entrepreneurship because they want to like encourage stuff like that but that is not currently at least the path that i've been going down uh so yeah an mba would ideally come when you're like in your late 20s but i wanted to do something or at least get myself onto the track of doing something like that really early in my career like right after i graduate from a bachelor's and the degree that offers that is a master's in management an mim degree the best mim degrees you'll find are from either uh, hec paris or from sengelan in switzerland or or flate in cia in cia is sort of new it started in 2019 so 2019 20, i'll be like i think the third or fourth uh, cohort which is pretty cool you get to like if you are like an early cohort person in like uh program generally you get to like uh come up with new initiatives clubs and stuff like that there's a lot about the program that you can shape if you're like from an earlier cohort so i think that's pretty cool as well uh but uh yeah so that is what i am currently doing and that's why i chose an mim and yeah that's that's pretty much it about my bachelor's and my masters that i'm going to pursue so i'll be really really honest okay in cad apparently i had heard from like one of my not batchmates but like one of my seniors i think who had like also applied to in cad or whatever uh that when you apply to in cad they give you 
uh, feedback on your rejection. If you get rejected, they tell you essentially why you got rejected and what is weak in your application. The reason I had applied to NCI is because I thought I was going to get rejected, and then I can use the feedback that they give me from their rejection and do better in my application. So I mean, I'll be really transparent about uh, my profile when I was applying. When I was applying, I was applying with a six point seven eight CG, which is I'll be very very honest with myself, bad. Right, a six point seven eight CG is by all means bad. A seven plus from which is considered to be a uh, first division. Anything above nine is considered to be distinction, but anything up seven plus is supposed to be first division. And I thought I should at least apply with a division one uh, CGPA, which I was going to get after January. Like my semester that was going on from June to December was going on pretty good. So I. I Estimated that after I get my updated CG after the current semester in from June to December, in Jan I'd have a CG that was above seven, and I'd apply with that seven plus CG PA, and that was the plan essentially. So I'd apply to like just a few schools that I was not like super keen on getting into, and in CR for the feedback so that I could get give like really strong uh, applications in uh, January. So that was the plan, but. I ended up getting into INSEAD, which I really, really didn't expect. So INSEAD was like a complete moonshot. I did not expect to get into INSEAD like now or post January or anything because in rankings INSEAD is up there with Harvard. Like INSEAD and Harvard like battled it out between one and two. Financial Times puts INSEAD at one and Harvard at two. QS puts Harvard at one and INSEAD at two. So I was like, okay, this is like this is like beyond anything like I can expect to get into. Let's just apply, get rejected, use the feedback, and get into something more rational like ESSEC or ESCP, right? Maybe HEC, right? So that's what I I had initially a list of thirteen schools to apply to, and eventually when I got into NCIR, I had heard back from them by December. I ended up applying to four schools, and I saved so much on like application fees because each of these applications costs like what. 200 euros, which is like what, like 16,000 to 20,000 rupees, which is like really, really expensive. So I had set aside like 1.5 to 2 lakhs just for applications. But yeah, I was able to get in to like INSEAD uh, in uh, yeah by December. So that was like super, super exciting. And INSEAD specifically, as part from rankings, the one thing that was very, very important to me about INSEAD's MIM degree was that it's a one-year degree. so this is probably going to apply to me more than other people but uh, what i have done is like a five year degree right like a dual degree masters plus bachelors that already puts me like one year behind most other people because people are doing four year bachelors people are doing three year bbas bcom right and i'm here doing like a five year bachelor so i wanted to make up that ground like by the time i come out of this mim i again want to be on par with the same like my batch Right, so that's why doing a one-year MIM was really, really like important to me. And I had done a bit of research. Even MBAs don't really need to be traditionally two years. You can finish an MBA in one year. One-year MBAs make sense. And like that's what INSEAD has offered uniquely, apart from other universities in their MIM, even in their MBA. Even their MBA is just one year as opposed to a two-year one from every other university essentially. So the one-year aspect was really, really important to me. the second aspect that was really important to me about doing my mim from inciad was that uh they knew and this might be like a con for most other programs but inciad is so so well reputed that their program being new means they've looked at every single other program and taken all the good things out of those program and made sure to leave out all of the flaws of every other program so most programs they two years in principle in theory but they are 3 years in practice like most mims how they work is you do your first year and then you do a one year internship that helps you land a job and then you do your second year which is 3 years and i'll be like 40 years old by the time i'm done with a 3 year like mim i i like i didn't want to spend that much time right inciad cuts out even the internship like inciad's program is 10 months and if you don't get placed within that 10 months while in the program itself you can either do a 4 month or 6 month internship after that so it's a 16 month program at most and from their placement record more than 99% i'm assuming everyone gets placed 
in that 10 month period there are very few people that have to go on ahead to that 4 month 6 month industry people do even if they are placed to see if they can get like a better job but they most people already have like a job in the bag at within just that 10 month period by the end of the 16 month in, like the 6 4 month internship people are coming out with like two three job offers that then they can like choose from so like yeah that was that was another aspect that if you are new and you are coming from a school as strongly reputed as india you are probably a program it's probably a program that you know been super super like focused and built with making sure that they have all the good things of all the other programs that they've watched and learned from and have removed out like all of the flaws that the other programs have had so far so yeah i think these are primarily the reasons that had motivated me to make sure like yeah instead of whatever but like yeah, huge brand name also like huge <laughs> so that's that's pretty much why in the idea but i can speak from experience so i am am i am especially are actually holistic degrees are actually degrees that tell you that they look at all parts of your application and actually look at all parts of your application like yeah masters in cs also will tell you the same thing you go to stanford like masters in cs application and say like yeah we want candidates who like you know like extra curriculars as well and everything like who have an overall rounded profile they don't they don't actually care about any of the extra curriculars they want a person who is very pro cs who's done a lot of competitive coding who has a strong computer science background and those are the people that get in if you did a little bit of cs but you were you know captain of the swim team in your school that doesn't count to them because they are a very very focused degree it's a masters in computer science right so these people will these universities will tell you that their degree is like their admission process is holistic but honestly it's really not whereas i think for something like an mim like a management degree it actually is holistic because it has to be right because what does a management in degree teach you it is not a single focused program it's not a single focused course like computer science or like mechanical engineering it is actually pretty diverse you need to know how to deal with people you know you need to know how to communicate you need to know how to lead you need to know how to team work so they actually get the best students by making sure they look at every element of your profile so like yeah my grades were not great but i think i made up for that like my grades were not great because i did a lot of like stuff in camp, on college like i was a, i was in clubs i was like doing all sorts of random stuff in college which which is why i'm going to say my grades were great but there are plenty of people who've done the same amount of things on campus and maintained good grades as well so like that is my reasoning but like obviously i could have gotten better grades but i made sure to like at least tell every single admission committee that i have done a lot and like while maybe my grades are lacking i think in my application at least i was able to make up for it by brilliant essays by strong extracurriculars and really really good lors so yes every element at least in mim applications of your application does matter do not take easily any part of your application like i think they have to like take five check boxes and they were able to in some amount check all five for me because my 10th and 12th also were really good i was like 94.3% in 12th or whatever and uh my gmat also was like i don't know what my gmat was like i don't know if 700 is good or bad i think 700 is above average that of the scores that they'll receive but it's not an exemplary score so they were go- they were probably able to check the box like yeah this person's academics is not something we have to worry about like he's not like extremely good at his academics but like it he's a safe bet as far as academics and everything else on the list they were easily able to take off because i had like shown that i was a- capable of doing everything else so like yeah pay a good amount of attention to like every single part of your application because it does matter 